Hello everyone, welcome to BI Consulting Pro. This is episode 2 of our series Power Query Tutorial. And in today's video, we are going to discuss about getting data. Power Query can connect to many different data sources, so you can work with the data you need. And in today's video, we are going to discuss about the different stages of getting the data. Connecting to a data source with Power Query follows a standard set of stages before loading the data at a destination. And in today's video, we are going to discuss about these four stages that is connection settings, authentication, data preview and query destination. So enough all the talking, let's get started. If you are over here for the very first time, please consider to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates and videos. The very first stage comes the getting data. In short, getting data simply means to get the data from the different data sources via Power Query for different tools such as Microsoft Azure Data Lake Storage, Microsoft Dataverse, Microsoft Excel or in Microsoft Power BI. Stages before loading the data at a destination. That means whenever you are getting a data from a data source using Power Query, then what are the different stages that it's going to go through? The very first comes the setting, then it comes the authentication, and then followed by the data preview, and at last it's the query destination where you have to load the data and if you want to make the further transformation into your data. Over here, you should note that setting means the connection settings over here. The very first, now we are going to start with the connection settings. Most connectors initially requires at least one parameter to initialize the connection to the data source. For example, let's talk about the SQL Server. In this case, the SQL Server connector requires at least the host name to establish a connection to the SQL Server instance. In comparison, when trying to connect to an Excel file, Power Query requires that you use the file path to find the file you want to connect to. But in SQL Server case, we just need a server name. The connector parameters are commonly used to establish a connection to a data source. And they, in conjunction with the connector used, define what's called data source path. So basically, we need a connection string or a data source path to connect with our data source. Over here, you should note that some connectors don't require you to enter any parameters at all. These are called singleton connectors and will only have one data source path available per environment. For example, Adobe Analytics, MailChimp or Google Analytics. The second stage is authentication. Every single connection that's made in Power Query has to be authenticated. The authentication methods vary from connector to connector and some connectors might offer multiple methods of authentication. So now we are going to discuss about currently available methods of authentication for Power Query. The very first is anonymous. This method is commonly used when the connecting to a data source that doesn't require user authentication, such as a web page or a file available over public HTTP. So if you are doing a data wrangling using Power BI or you are getting data from any source that doesn't require you to authenticate yourself, we are going to use the anonymous. Second comes the basic. In this case, you just need to use a username and password sent in base64 encoding are accepted for authentication. Number third is API key. In this case, a single API key is accepted for authentication. Now, the most commonly used one is organizational account or Microsoft account. This method is also known as Auth 2.0. So many of you have asked previously like which connection to use. So I believe here you know what is Auth 2.0 organizational account or Microsoft account. And we will discuss this in detail in our upcoming videos. So please stay tuned for more videos. Number fifth is Windows. It can be implicit or explicit. And lastly is the database. 
where you need the access to your database so this is only available in some database connectors not for all next we are going to discuss about data preview as you can see on my screen whenever you are going to load your data you will see a navigator pane and in this case this is loading the data from the database and which is adventure works 2012 database and here you will see the two different windows one on your left hand side another is on your right hand side under the navigator pane so the goal of data preview stage is to provide you with a user friendly way to preview and select your data so that you can select the different tables or objects and then you can preview your data over here as well Depending on the connector that you are using, you can preview data by using either your navigator window or table preview dialog box. The navigator window consists of two main sections. The one on your left hand side you can see the object section pane is displayed or there. The user can interact with and select these objects from the window. Second one is the data preview pane where you can see your data preview. So you can select one of the object over here and you can see the preview. And then you can select based on your preview of the data that which items you want to select or not. Over here you should note that for Power Query in Excel, select the select multiple items option from the upper left corner of the navigation window to select more than one object at a time in the object selection pane. However, you should note that we have a limitation as well. The list of objects in Power Query Desktop is limited to 10,000 items only. And this limit does not exist in Power Query Online. So whenever you have to work with Power BI Desktop, this limit is always going to be. But for that, we have a workaround as well. So let's discuss about the workaround. In order to overcome this limitation on your Power BI Desktop, what you have to do, first you have to right click on the root node of the navigator and then you have to select transform data. Once you will do that, Power Query Editor then opens with the new full navigation table in the table preview area. This view doesn't have a limit on the number of objects and you can use filters or any other Power Query transformation to explore the list and find the rows you want like generally you do the transformations in Power Query Editor. And the third and the final step would be upon finding the item you want, you can get at the contents by selecting the data link as you can see on your screen right now. Now let's discuss about the table preview dialog box. So whenever you view any table, like I mentioned, when you would come to the step two, you will see the table preview dialog box. So the table preview dialog box consists of only one section of the data preview. You will get this kind of preview from a folder connector. Now let's move further. The last stage would be your query destination stage. Before that we have completed the three stages. That means connection settings, authentication, data preview and now it's the time to load the data into Power Query Editor to make the further transformations. So in this stage we will come, you will find the different panes over here. As you can see, I have marked as number 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And we will discuss about them in detail in our upcoming videos. So here, if you would like to make further transformation, you want to group by, you want to aggregate your data, you want to remove some columns, you want to add some columns, conditional columns, formatting the data and other transformations that you want to perform, you can do it over here. So these were the four stages that you perform whenever you are getting data using Power Query. In our upcoming video, we are going to discuss about authentication with a data source. Join us for more exciting videos and don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates.